Hello everybody, I'm Amani Philly. I want to sing this song to you guys. As soon as I convince myself Soon Soon as I convince myself That I can do it all alone Where you go, there you go, here you go, now we go you're the only one that could ever handle me They say that I'm a ladder You say that I'm your You say that I'm just right I'm hoping it be like this All the time I said I'm hoping it be like this all the time Found a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow I found you Found a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow I found you Damn, I had my Gina All the time You got me hoping Better be like this forever Forever, forever Damn, I had my Gina all along Kicked out enough pain, per game strong But I couldn't lift you up my heart Cause you make me weak sometimes I run away, don't want my heart to be breached Full circle like a full moon this wolf house for you yeah. Full circle Full circle like a full moon moon This wolf house for you yeah. All the time Oh, I found you You got me hoping that it be like this forever, forever, forever. Yeah. I'm hoping it be like this all the time. Yeah. All the time. All the time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, the next song um, is uh, Waiting Room. You heard this acapella last time. I swear I look at you with the purest eyes Your eyes are perfection, clearly the pain of lies I'm mad it took so long, but I'm happy There is nothing you can say to me That would change the way I feel about you In my mind oh, 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 Never have I loved somebody Never have I loved somebody You're the only exception 
illuminate my life. The most beautiful in the world, in the world. There's no debating. No one can compare. And I'll be here. This is a outro on uh, my album that I released on um, August 4th um, called Forever Old. And, um, uh, it's an acapella. And um, it was mostly like a last minute decision on the album just to do an outro. But it was because it was something that I just wrote and decided to record. So here we go. If you don't know by now if you don't see it if you don't know by now I don't know why you bring out the best in me you bring out the rest of me you don't know how much i love you i said you don't know how much i love you you need to know it you need to know that I'm always here. I'm gonna always show it no matter what. If you just stay and let me love, let me love, yeah, let me love. gonna work out great fine as they can possibly be things are gonna turn out great just as they should be 
if you just stay and let me love let me love you thank you thank you I'm Imani Philly uh, and, uh, <laughs> You can find me on Instagram, um, Imani underscore um, Philly. Um, you can find me on um, Facebook, Imani Philly. You can find me on Twitter. It. Oh, how to spell it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Imani is M-A-A-H-N-I Philly, P-H-I-L-L-Y. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm not Give it up again for Imani Philly. That boy can sing. Bringing church up in here. So we have to um, get off the stage. Keontae right by eight because you all are doing some construction or something. You don't know what I'm talking about. That's what Aaron said. I wonder if that was his reason to just tell us to get off the stage. Y'all been talking about us hogging the stage. <laughs> Yeah, okay, all right, well, we, we, we should be finishing at 8, but um, again, my name is Khadija Moon, I am with Liberated Muse Arts Group, we do every other month C3, which is Creative Creatives Creating, we started last year, last spring in 2017, and we've been doing it every other month since then, we have a wonderful bevy of artists that come out, Typically, um, and because we're in, ending at 8, I'm not going to do a lot of the activities that we typically do, but I have, um, I have a group on Facebook called Liberated Muse Arts Group where I share opportunities for artists. So um, opportunities to get funding, opportunities to audition, offer, opportunities to perform on different stages. So I encourage you to join Liberated Muse online um, at, on Facebook for to be part of our group, to get those things that I just talked about. We also publish a book. We have an anthology series. The third um, book was, is digital on our website, liberatedmuse.com. It's free. And it's called Creases Expelled from the Fold. It's a um, literary anthology as well as music. There's music as well as poems and short fiction. Um, and so I encourage you to read it. And I'm going to share with you the title poem, um, Creases Expelled from the Fold, by Khadijah Ali Komen. Every day is a moment of clarity for the melanated folk, either waiting for your reasoning to reject our humanity or witnessing yet another death by your hands of souls wrapped in brown skin again and again, the repetition like drum beats, beating, beating into our minds that we are not valued, throw away preciousness only to be spotlighted under the looking glass of scientific inquiry, to be copied and conjoled, adorned prettily for corporate consumption, we have explained and hashtagged our bodies to request, beg, and plead for the empathy and solidarity as humans to no avail. Failing, failing, failed. Maybe if we were dogs, it would be easier, I think. We'd be heard and treated justly in less than a blink. We'd save our necks from the proverbial leash. We'd get to move freely about up and down the streets. Parks would be made just for us to gather and convene. Y'all would love us in all our varied sizes and shapes and textures in between. Y'all would pick it and boycott to save and protect our skin if we had four legs or were the animals you treat us like. Maybe we could begin to win. Maybe freedom for us would begin. Maybe we would not be judged by our skin. Maybe we would not be have to face police brutality again. Maybe we could stop protesting. Maybe we could stop marching. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe it's pretty awful that a dog's life is more stellar than being a human, black, brown, red, or high yellow. Maybe it's pretty terrible that after all the horror you inflict, all you see is a need to extinguish the lives of people who just want to be free. Maybe it is high time folks stop trying to appeal to your conscience, appeal to your heart and your mind. Maybe it is high time we realize your resistance is by design. You know who we are. 
You know we are human. You know we are worthy of respect. But pushing past all your years of indoctrination that has shaped your belief that you are better is something you cannot so easily forget. You were promised superiority. But every day you're confronted by the fact that you were told a lie. So when your place of work or whatever place you have power to assert, you go and give it a try. Like wrinkles that are resistant to the straightening of the heat, every day a victory for you revolves around our defeat. Always trying to feel complete. There is a lot to say about those who only feel tall when others are on their knees. The feeling you got there is something you ain't never going to appease. This back and forth is going to haunt us all until you come to grips that we are here. We are here, becoming more self-aware, more unified, stronger, and more bold, forever wrinkling your plans of dominion, no longer creases expelled from the fold. This is getting pretty old. A wall can't be built to make this right for you. What you got broken inside is generational for you. This mediocrity you are confronting is what is hurting you. This failure to face the truth of what is hurt is what is hurting you. This false reality you keep trying to make real is what is lying to you. Wake up! Your dreams are hurting us all. Thank you. So that's from our... Um, our anthology, Creases Expelled from the Fold. You can read it free of charge at liberatedmuse.com. We do have two prior anthologies that came out in two, 2009 and 2012, respectively, um, that are for purchase on Amazon.com. Um, I'm going to do one acapella piece that's a minute um, and bring our, our, final, um, our final artist um, up to the mic. This song is, is another one that's on a CD that I did not bring, <laughs> that I did not bring to sell. I am trying to sell it. Um, you can purchase the CD on liberatedmuse.com. It's called Awakening. Um, this piece was also featured um, in the play Building Beautiful that debuted this past, when was it? September at the Kennedy Center in the Page to Stage Festival. It's called Do We Convene? Michael Brown, I'm a duty yellow, Renisha, McBride, Trayvon Martin, Oscar Grant, the pain won't subside we are reminded every day the names the faces change the actions stay the same black men black women gone down Murderers unwavered without Maria sound. Do we convene? Do we stand? Do we holler louder? Get more mad? Is it vengeance that we seek? Or do we clasp our hands and admit defeat? Michael Brown, I'm a dude yellow. Renisha McBride, Trayvon Martin. Oscar Grant, the pain won't subside. So, you ready for our final act of the evening? Please put your hat. So, first of all, let me preface, okay? 
So this is, we've had the wonderful vocal stylings of Xander Richardson. Uh, yay! And if you missed it, I posted in the group. We had the vocal stylings of Amani Philly. Woo! And now we have a poet coming to the mic. This poet is, yes, she is, um, has a forthcoming book that I'm sure she's going to tell us about. She is also a faculty member at Morgan State University, and she has hosted numerous events throughout the Washington, D.C. area. Please put your hands together for poet Kimberly Collins. Woo! Thank you, thank you. So I am going to read from my forthcoming collection, Bessie's Resurrection. And this is what I imagine. If you haven't read um, Native Son, you got to read it, right? So this is what I imagine Bessie say to Mary. Can no white girl talk about loving my man more than me? Her lips ain't big enough to kiss the pain her America has injected in his skin. Can't no white girl talk about loving my man more than me. Till she birth one blacker than me or cut one from a tree. Still, she better not never tell that lie to me. <laughs> a long blues note. And it's a small church on the Negro side of town where they gather, shoulder strong as one voice in their glory to God, praising him for the trouble they've seen and the low valleys made high. There is no casket for this woman named Bessie. The coroner took her for bodily evidence. It is a misery memorial for a brown girl dead. It could have been any of these cinnamon, cumin-colored, souls. Somebody needs to cry for her. Their sagging shoulders slumber against one another until one of the church mothers breaks ranks with the somber sleepers to raise her floral hanky and ask the preacher, why Bessie? What about Bessie? Black, gray black, black black, blue black, dusty black, too black for bigger, too black for an America that don't like him, that don't like him and Bessie. I saw pushed back, pushed out, resisting, pushing back, pushed out, Queen Bess flying, pushing back, pushed out, aviator dreams, resisting, pushing back, pushed out, Bessie Smith, resisting, pushed out, pushed back, back of lines, back, Push down, back out, Mississippi, resisting, pushing back, death on Route 61, abandoned on country roads, in chutes, clawing for air. Up south. I never wanted to go to Mississippi. Mama's mama still there yearning for visiting kin. She say folks don't starve like they do up here. Mississippi's magnolia trees never held no charm for me. Only hypnotizing loose ropes swinging in front of me. Can't convince me Mississippi better than Chicago, New York, Philly, or any northern city, even if they lynch with iron ropes and bonfire chairs. <laughs> Forget me not. Okay. So I'm writing this, it's a lot of these poems. So those poems were in Bessie Mears' voice. So this is what, and you, this is um, Bessie, whoops, I'm getting my Bessies confused. Bessie Coleman. <laughs> Whole lot of Bessies. So and she, was, she was really a spitfire, you know, the first. African American woman aviator, and a lot of the ways that she got to do what she did was that she, she finessed people. <laughs> she did. This is called Forget Me Nots. You don't get to wash away my smell like I was wasted yellow on your skin. 
You don't get to gargle with remorse, leaving your morning breath dumb. You don't get to forget midnight's fragrance, nor are sweet sweating sheets. You don't get to recall your fingers after I lay petal open to your guided flesh. You don't get to forget my lullaby tongue or my hips flying us to night's ledge. You don't get to forget none of it when I still hear my name riding us home. Now I forgot which Bessie was saying this poem. (laughs) But I think all of them probably said it at one time or another. It's called Baby. And Bessie Smith starts it out singing, his voice sounds like chimes, I mean the organ kind. His voice sounds like chimes, I mean the organ kind. And every time he speaks, his music ease my troubling mind. Bessie Smith's Any Woman's Blues. I swear, don't nobody say baby like a black man. Babe, baby. Any rendition will do when he come creeping in with the sun hitting his face while the moon shining on his ass. My eyes rolling so hard, I think they're going to pop through their lids. Arms akimbo, mouth wet with practice, and he smiles. Comes close up on me, smelling like night's edge. He almost whispers a wicked whine to ensure my capture. My hands smooth his wrinkled, empty space, his side of the bed. Hey, baby. How you doing, baby? I missed you, babe. Come here, baby. You know I love you, baby. Staring straight in his gravy-colored face, I tingle. Thighs twitch enough to dampen all rage. Baby. 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 I've been trying to make it home to you all night. Baby, don't act like that. There goes my knees, collapsing me onto our bed. My head's in my hands, only half mad now. He bends his muffle, baby, vibrates my collarbone. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. That's why they laugh and laugh. Laugh and laugh. Baby. Okay. So I'm going to end with why, Bessie? Church. I want to ask you, why not Bessie? Oh, when you ask the Lord, why me? He says, why not you? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Bessie was like any of you. She was black. She was female, she was poor, she was in love, she was a daughter, she was a hard worker, just like any of you. Why Bessie? Why not Bessie? Her name conjures up sleeping souls rocked in the belly of slave ships. Her blues first explode there in the bowels of this hellish ship that docked her and our forefathers on this foreign shore. She came womb weary, having dumped her load in Yemiyah's arms. She expels more seeds and planted rows after drinking penny royal tea. This was her open revolt. She refused to birth anyone that wasn't free. Her name is synonymous with both beast and woman. Teeth checked, nipples pinched. Private parts probed in public places by pale faced peeping toms. She is a muddy map of southern red clay stuck to her heels, plowing through stubborn earth, pulling weight that is never hers to turn over soil, to steal a yam, to cook. To remind her of home where festivals welcome the yam's arrival. Church, I said church. I know Bessie Mears ain't the first Bessie you knowed. Who don't know an Aunt Bessie, Cousin Bessie, Grandma Bessie, Mama Bessie, Queen Bessie, or that woman called Empress that y'all sneak to the juke joint to see? Even Mr. got a mule named Bessie. Her name is a collective song moaned into meaning. It means she knows something about somebody trying to ride the will out of you. 
It means her gnarled knuckles will not allow rings of deceit to slide over them for an unkempt promise. It means her unlettered words from her fire breath speak her bruised beauty out of box lives. Bessie is the celestial charmer, the secret keeper of the soul's healing power. Bessie's name hums meaning into lives which are real and imagined and hard. Her name, like her life, is a subtle blues note, a slow moan heard while spooning stew. And church, I said church, on that day when she died, when they pulled her body out that cold chute, it was more than the, her that was raised from that place. No, brothers and sisters, Bessie didn't die in that chute. When she came up, all those Bessies who wear iron harnesses around their soldiers and on their backs dragging unwanted weight rose up too. Yes, all those Bessies who waited upon the Lord had their strength renewed and mounted up with wings as eagles. They ran and were not weary no more. All those Bessies whose mouths were silenced with leather bits came out with her that day. They escaped Shadrach, Abednego, and Meshach's fiery furnace of woe. She was Jesus who suffered the blunt trauma to his skin, but not his spirit to rise again, asking, do you remember me? Church, do you remember him? The one that died on Calvary, nailed to that wooden cross. You ask why? Why him, the mighty lamb of the world? Why? Why, Bessie, a woman who looked just like you, blending all our night and memories of kingdoms and queens buried in the dust track of our tears? I'm going to close now. But before I leave here today, I want you all to chew on this in the front of your minds. They say Jesus had 12 disciples, but that ain't true. They forgot Mary Magdalene and Jesus' own mama. So why, Bessie? Because Bessie was one of them, too. Thank you. And the book comes out in March. So I'll see y'all again. Give it up again for Kimberly Collins. So when I said she was the last, I apparently was lying because we had someone um, come in who's going to be our, our final act. And I do want to open, um, if there, is there anyone here that wants to do the open mic or has another piece that they want to share? Okay. Well, we'll see. Someone might come in. Um, before I introduce our, our last act, I wanted to share a piece. I was inspired by Kimberly um, giving praise to our ancestors our Bessies. Wasn't that a beautiful trilogy? Was it three or four you did for us? Three, a trilogy. Um, and so a couple of weeks, Fridays ago, I was asked to do a tribute to Zora Neale Hurston. So this was significant to me because I had just read her latest book, Barracoon. And it's so funny. I got a full body massage today. That's not the point of, why, of what I'm talking about. But... <laughs> I was so excited about, he asked me like one question and I just kept talking. I started telling him like history and I know he was like, will you shut the heck up and just like get your massage? But I was telling him about everything that I learned in Barracoon because I believe everything happens for a reason. So I had been asked this year to teach a course, in a fine arts, fine and performing arts course. I normally teach communication studies. So I've been, I was asked to teach this course that teaches about visual arts and performing arts, the history and everything, and I decided to teach it from the perspective of history and geography, because a lot of the field of art history comes from a lens that is European, right? And so I did, I began this after reading Barracoon, after getting my Ancestry.com results and finding out where I'm from, which is uh, my people are from Benin and all of this stuff. And the person who was interviewed in Zora Neale Hurston's piece, her, her book, The Barracoon, is actually um, a, a documentary where she's 
that's not what it's called, a documentary, that's film, but you know what I mean. But she's talking to the last living person who had been taken from Africa to come to this country and become a slave. And so he was able to tell Zora Neale Hurston his experience of having his village raided, being led to what are called barracoons before the ships bring him to America. I totally recommend this book, okay? Because a lot of people know Zora Neale Hurston as a fiction writer or playwright, but she was also an anthropologist. And it was just a wonderful experience reading this, particularly knowing that he comes from where my people come from. So it, it made me, it connected with me. So this is called Zora Past the Sun. And the song that I'm singing at the beginning and at the end is actually a folk song called Halimafak that you can actually Google Zora Neale Hurston singing and you can hear her singing it in a recorded interview um, that WPA did with her. You may leave and go to Hallam of Fack, but my slow drag will bring you back. Well, you may go, but this will bring you back. Hilltop high around them clouds and past the sun is where my Zora done gone. Strumming tall tales watered high for ripe picking by greedy imaginations and thirsty heart patters, still longing for the lick of her griot tongue to moisten the memories her stories imprint on our souls. Zora is still weaving them words into quilts that wear patterns of blackness on each colorful square. I hear her laughing. Jolly chortles of merciless wisdom capturing the dusky bleakness and wringing it dry until only sun-drenched glazes of merriment decorate the crevices of her tails. Warming us wonderful as she beckons us closer. Put your foot up and stay a while, she is sure to whisper. As we are friended close with her latest tale, capturing language in its bare shape, naked and unyielding to the ironic violence of Anglo pristineness with keys jangling, she splays open the universal cage, holding captive native tongues and dialect, yelling, use free now. And they, these words into her worlds that become our own lands, her people becoming our family, and this process changes us, keeps changing us, shikalacking and furious frenzy as we read, 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 and love, and know, and become, and grow, and read, and sing, and understand, and <laughs> that our Zora may be hilltop high, Round them, round them clouds and past the sun. But we, with our greedy imaginations and thirsty heart patters, are always there with her. You may even go to Hallam effect, but my slow drag will bring you back. You may go, but this will bring you back. Thank you. So that was a tribute to Zora Neale Hurston. So our next artist that's coming to the mic, who said he's here for the open mic, but he has been here for C3 since 2017 and our second show. He normally performs with his group called Graybeard Poets. I am so grateful to see him and to know that he wants to come up and share some of his poetry with us. Please put your hands together for Milas Young. Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Much love to Ms. Khadija and to all of you. I have three selections that I want to share. Um, just an expression from the spiritual realm, if you will. First one is called Gods of Men. Beware and be warned, ye who are wise and foolish, of those who make gods of men, a spectacle of the disrespectful, conceived and an unreparable. An imagery fostered in falsehoods and fallacies, technicolored hype for the stage and the mic. No longer do we seek true talent but throes of popularity. Stars made obedient to the manipulative ingredient. Money and fame accelerates the expedient. 
Executive producers are rather convenient when personal principles are more lenient. As the complaint echoed of today's music seems to suggest there's less meaning in it. Reality has escaped those who make gods of men. Hormonal injections to bring Olympic perfections. Infections of acceptance as the greatest of all. Who live past the fun of kids playing ball. Who lives in glass houses draped in celebrity spouses. Taped by the media and reputations of frustrations. Come way before they're ousted or outed as a fraud when the hype can't be maintained, explain, restrain, or the pain is too great to keep the sane in the brain. Sad are these worshipers of these gods of men, a legacy of the lost who couldn't count the cost. Egos get swollen as souls are stolen. Pressure emboldens those who seek to hold an image that's golden. Life's fabric is unwoven. When men become undone, it gets lonely at the top, trying to be number one. But what is never seen beyond the caviar dreams, the truth that's cruel and mean that reveals that things aren't what they seem. And this I'm only trying to come clean about the eye that's not in team, because too many of us die falling for the scheme. Gods of men. This next one is a, it's called a reasonable wish. I wish I knew the words that could be uttered throughout the universe that would break the curse. I wish I knew the words to say. I wish they could be amplified to destroy the lies so that we can find instant results when we pray. You know the words that reach the soul without the attempt to control another by the words we convey. Then peace will kill the beast that seems to never cease trying to take our souls away. I wish I knew the works that kill and erase the hurts and repairs the broken souls and in an instant close the distance between the broken and the whole. How great it would be to dry the tears of mother's eyes whose childs are lost in the street, or the equity of souls who truly knows that the world is not designed for their defeat. I wish I knew the melody of the song of inner peace. I would blast it on the radio, hoping the song would never cease. I wish the words appear on billboards and a virus on social media, required as a daily emergency alert and work of those in need of us. Distributed to every criminal ten times as a daily minimal, conveyed in sex commercials, messages that are subliminal. I really wish I knew the words to bless us and make us whole. They would be uttered to preserve and heal our souls. Last piece is called The Ugly Truth. Slowly we sip the poison and don't taste it anymore on the TV and the radio. Slowly we ingest the death and cheer it when it scores on a game and on a show. Slowly we abandon life, mother, daughter, and wife, chase away life. It seems that the price is worth the sacrifice. Slowly our values fade as we become slaves to sin, then die from inside, and nobody wins. The ugly truth. Thank you. Give it up again for Miles Young. <laughs> All right, so we've come to the end of C3, another edition of C3. This is actually the last one of the year before we come back in 2019. Um, I want to encourage you to stick around. Do we have anyone here from Open Mic? No? Okay. So I want to stick around and just meet people before you go. We have people that have product to sell, right? Anyone? Oh, good. I'm not the only one that left. My CDs at home doing no good. Um, if if you anything that you heard today that you enjoyed, I have um, Liberated Muse has a CD. You can buy it liberatedmuse.com. From you can download it on Bandcamp, but you can order it, and then I will mail you a copy of the CD. You can order my CD at kadijamoon.com. Kimberly's books coming out in you say March. Awesome. Phil Am Amani Philly has his CD that's out now. I know it's on Spotify. It's on iTunes, Tidal. So you can download, you listen to it, then you can go buy it. Xander? Xander, I'm going to get him in the studio and see if I can record him. Well, not me personally. My partner can record him, and maybe he can do a duet with me. Maybe both of you. I would love to do a duet with you all. You have such nice manly voices. I love it. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was, I'm just, 
I got a massage and now I'm just manly voices. And they record this. I'm sorry, Hook. Oh, my bad. That's my man. Um, so anyway, <laughs> TMI. Um, so thank you for coming out. Please stay connected with us, Liberated Muse, and have a safe night home. Good night. <laughs>